big welcome back to everybody at Bute Hill and all pupils across the Concilium Academy Trust. Today's Key Stage 3 lesson is on the periodic table again, and it's on a gentleman called Dmitry Mendelev. And at the end of this lesson, I'm hoping that you understand how Dmitry Mendelev developed the beginnings of the modern periodic table that you use today. OK, so before we take a step forward to look at Mendeleev's periodic table, let's do some retrieval practice of the things that we've looked at in the last four lessons. So two simple questions for you. You pause the video now, turn the questions on paper, and then we'll check our answers. How would you get on? NH4NO3 is a compound, but I'm asking you to describe it in terms of atoms and elements. Did you spot that there are three elements? There is the element nitrogen, hydrogen and oxygen. Could you tell me how many of each, how many atoms of nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen? Well, there are two atoms of nitrogen. There are four atoms of hydrogen and there are three atoms of oxygen in that compound. How many atoms in total? Simply add the three numbers up. There are nine atoms in that compound. Where in the periodic table are the non-metals located? If you remember the work we did in the last lesson, there was a line, wasn't there, between boron and aluminium, and it, and it caused a, a kind of step step down, which split the periodic table into two sections. So where are the non-metal elements? Are they to the left or the right of that line? Well, they're to the right of that line. So the simple answer to the question is the non-metals are to the right-hand side of the periodic table. Well done if you got that right. If you were still struggling with one or two of those things, you may want to recap over the videos that we've had previously. OK, if I give you the choice then of those two phones, which one would you go for? I'm pretty sure it'd be for the iPhone on the right hand side. Your parents probably had to make do with the one on the left when they first got a mobile phone, the Nokia. But if they hadn't have had that Nokia, and if scientists and technicians and engineers hadn't have built that Nokia, they wouldn't have been able to develop the technology that, um, that we could now use in the iPhone. For things to improve, scientists need to learn from one another they need to develop ideas. And that's exactly what happened with the periodic table. The Nokia of the periodic table would have been a gentleman called John Newlands, and we'll have a look at him in a second. But Dmitry Mendeleev came along after John Newlands, and Dmitry Mendeleev built upon Newlands' work to build a better periodic table. So John Newlands then, respected scientist of the day. And at the time, there were 56 known elements. So in the periodic table you've been looking at, there are a hundred, and sometimes there are more than that if you consider the ones that are man made too. So there are 56 known elements, and he kept looking at them. And the only thing he could think to do was to kind of try to order them in order of weight. So he started with the lightest, and the lightest known element was hydrogen, and he wrote it down. And next to that, he wrote the next lightest, which was lithium. The one that's slightly heavier than lithium at the, in the day was gallium. And he continued to order them, so they're getting heavier. And he got to oxygen. Now, the next one in the list was an element called fluorine. Now, rather than write it next to oxygen, he realised that fluorine was a gas and a reactive gas like hydrogen. So what he did is he wrote it underneath hydrogen and he started to build the first group. He then continued and he put them in order. And I'll very quickly put a part of the table that he put together on the screen. So what did he get right? Well, if you consider that lithium, sodium and potassium, those that are highlighted in blue, are still together on the periodic table today, he did create the beginnings of a successful group there. He also grouped oxygen and sulphur together. Now, although one is a solid and one is a gas, they do react in very similar ways and deserve to be in the same group. However, underneath sulphur, he's got a metal, iron, boring, uh, really quite unreactive uh, metal. And he's, and he's grouped that with two fairly reactive non-metals. Is iron in the right place? Probably not. He got fluorine and chlorine right, very, very reactive gases. But although hydrogen is a reactive gas, it almost chemically does completely the opposite of those two. So he got some things right, but there were many, many, many problems and problems needed solutions. And John Newlands couldn't, couldn't give those solutions. And that's where Dmitry Mendeleev came in. So there was problems with John Newlands' table. 
but Dmitry Mendeleev had solutions to those problems. He actually did exactly the same thing as John Newlands. He took a piece of paper, he wrote down the name of the element, and he wrote how heavy it was on it, and he listed them in order of weight. But what he did is, if you look at the example on, uh, on the screen at the moment, you've got Cu, which has a weight of 63, Zn, which has a weight of 65. And back in, in 1869, the one that would have come next would have been As on 75. And what John Newlands would have done is he would have put AS next to ZN and underneath AL. Well, AS and AL don't deserve to be in the same group. They don't have the same properties. The big breakthrough was that Dmitry Mendeleev realized that there must be gaps in the table, gaps for those elements that hadn't yet been discovered. So next to ZN and underneath AL, he realized there must be another element. We just not discovered it yet. So he left a gap. And what he did was even better than leaving gaps is he made predictions about what that element would be like. So you can see that he actually said that it will have a weight of 68. And on the card, even though it doesn't show on the screen, he would write down how he would expect it to behave. And he did that across the period table. And, surely but, uh, and, and obviously in years to come, slowly but surely those elements were discovered and in virtually all the cases, Dmitry Mendeleev was correct. So he left gaps and he made predictions. Very, very clever man. How clever is Dmitry Mendeleev? He realized that not all the elements had been discovered and he laid out the table and left gaps for those elements. And in those gaps, he made predictions about what those elements would be like. Fantastic genius of a man. So what we'd like you to do now is produce a piece of writing for us. And that piece of writing is going to, if it's done really well, could include the nine words below. You may not be able to use all nine words, and that I don't want you to worry about. You use as many of those words as you can. OK, so produce the piece of writing and then um, email it to your science teacher. OK, if the answer to the question was red, well, the question could be what colour means stop on traffic lights. It could be what colour kit the Man United wear. The answer to this question is Mendeleev, but what I would like you to do is write me the question. Email it to your teacher or share it with us on Instagram on the Buell Hill Science Instagram page. Hope you found today's lesson useful. Take care, everybody.